There once was a jolly swagman camped by a billabong Under the shade of a coolabar tree And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boil You come a waltzing Matilda with me A waltzing Matilda, Matilda, my darling You come a waltzing Matilda with me And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boil Sing Matilda with me. G'day and welcome to Duck Solid Gaming and our Down on the Map series on Broadacres Farm. Bloody Oath Cobbers, this is the Bees Knees map of 2017 for this dinky die bloke. And it should be for all my Jackaroo and Jillaroo mates out there in the interwebbery. Fair crack of the whip to Ben and his mates for this Bonzer edition to Farming Simulator 17. Fellow blokes and shielers, you need to take Captain Cook at this rip snorter of a map. Hawkey once said, take a sickie for the America's Cup. I say take a sickie because of broad acres. Unfortunately, some of you have bucked this chance of playing a Time 16 map, as your confuser won't handle the mustard. So be aware that it takes a machine that's built like a brick shithouse to run this game smoothly. Don't get your knickers in a twist if you can't play it, just because your confuser belongs at the bottom of the drink. So sit back with your bangers and mash, or your dog's eye and dead horse, with your esky full of long necks or tinnies and enjoy this look at farming Aussie style. Remember, this ain't no brown eyed mullet shonky cubby house, it's a damn beaut, ridgy didge, Aussie station. And welcome. So here we are, we're uh, on Broad Acres. Our first real, well, I would say our first real true Aussie map. And not only is it a real true Aussie map, it's a 16 times Aussie map. Ben and the blokes have done a fantastic jo job of producing this map, which is now open to everyone to download. Um, but uh, there's a few words of caution. It is huge. Now, what do you mean huge? Well, Goldcrest Valley Farm, for instance, you can do one lap in the train in about two and a half, three minutes. The two different train lines on this map, the smallest one will take you 14 and a half minutes from start to finish at maximum speed. The largest one will take you 18 and a half minutes from start to finish. Now be aware that doesn't go through the entire map, it just basically cuts through half the map. I can also tell you that to go from the storage farm here, or the storage area here, or the, the shop, to the main storage area, which is in the mid middle of the map, in a tractor that does an average of 50 kilometers an hour, will take you about six to seven minutes of traveling time. So it is not small. The largest map, oh, sorry, the largest field on this map is 730 hectares. It will take you a significant amount of time. In fact, it would take you a couple of game days minimum to do it with just one tractor and implement or one combine harvester. The map is set up and basically requires you to use course play. Now there are many people out there that have done course play tutorials. Uh, my personal preference is my good friend Jerry Grizzly Bear Sims, um, of which there's a link down in the comments below. Go check out his course play tutorials uh, and you, you won't regret it. You'll understand course play much better after that. Okay. All that aside, let's sort of start delving into the map. Now, it is going to take a lot of time to go through all the intricacies of the production cycles, all the, all the stuff that's on this map. So we're not going to be able to get it all done in one episode or two episodes or whatever. So we're going to sort of stage it slowly as we go along. So the plan is we'll effectively do a few intro videos, which each episode will cover a different aspect of the farm, what the items are, where they're located, all that sort of stuff and go through from there. I'm also going to cover the equipment that I'm going to be using in this Let's Play series because this will develop into a Let's Play series which is all there and I'll show you and show you my personal preferences and stuff. On top of that we're just going to go very slowly with with everything else in relation to the crops and that. Reason being is Ben has recently put up that uh, they are currently working hard on version 2.0. Yeah they're going to bring out a version 2 which is going to incorporate a lot of changes. So they've had a lot of feedback from a lot of the people that are using it on their on their Facebook page. 
And due credit to Ben and the boys, they've they've got stuck <laughs> they've got stuck straight into it. One of the most important things I, I guess for many out there is um, a lot of people have been sort of commenting in relation to the fact that the fences are so close to the fields, and it makes it problematic, nigh on impossible to use AI workers. Uh, hence why they've obviously promoted that course plays is your, your method of choice. Um, so what Ben and Ben are going to do after doing a, a poll on their Facebook page is they're going to produce two different versions of the map come version two. One where the maps have their fences still in place with some larger gates and maybe some, some repositioned gates because uh, that was sort of identified as, as a problematic area. Um, but with all the collisions on the fences still intact. So AI won't work still. Unless you do your headers beforehand, AI just won't work. And I mean, that's the other thing too. I mean, you've got to remember that if you do your headers, then your AI will work because it will, it will know where you've finished plowing or, or whatever else. So just keep that in mind. The other version of the map will be a map that has all the changes that are done in, in version two. So the big gates, reposition gates, some, some better railway crossings and all that hopefully and, and some other stuff. Um, fuel, storage points, all that sort of stuff. But it will take all the collisions off the fences. Now, I don't know if he's taken the collisions off all the fences or just the ones that are around the fields that I have, I'm not aware of. But that will make it easy for those that just want to use their um, the AI workers and just and get get into the into the fields. Now, I mean, you're not going to be able to do this solo. This is really a multiplayer map or one where you're going to be using AI to do. Like for instance, there's one of the smaller maps on here which I'll show you shortly. Um, I used one tractor with one plow at 20 k's an hour, and it still took about an hour, hour and a bit of game time. Of, of real time in, in game to actually get the field ploughed and that was not one of the big fields so you're going to take a lot of time okay but anyway all that aside the other thing is uh, a map of this size you will get some some issues with gameplay um, I mean my computer is not of the top end by any means it is an i7 6600 I've got 32 gig of RAM I've got a GTX 1070 um, uh, with six gig, gig of video RAM, and and I still have some stuttering. I generally don't have too much of a problem with it otherwise. But for instance, when it does do an auto game save, it does pause the game for a, for a second or two. So there are those sort of things you will have issues with. Okay, but uh, it's well worth it. It really is. So what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the PDA and see what we've got. PDA, I said, not the store. Okay, so as you can see, it's loading and it does take some time to load the map. Here we go, here we go. Right, there we go. So, these fields down here are 700 and, what did I say, 750 hectares. They're huge. The map I said earlier, one and a half hours to plough, is that the field I mean, is that one there, field 22. It took ages, okay? Um, I have worked on field three in another gameplay just to, as a sort of a test, and I had three harvesters running that. And again, it took me a few hours to get that harvested, okay? So it's not a short-term quick play map. So if you come on here and you just want a quick game where you're going to quickly get things done, it's not for you. It's 16 times size map. It's, it is huge. So like I was saying before, the railway line goes from here, for one of the lines comes down, down through here, and then back uh, pretty much up through here. Um, around that, that sort of line. And that's 18 and a half minutes. The other one which does this side was 14 and a half minutes. So from here to here at 50 k's an hour takes you about five or six minutes. So you can imagine that if you're going to transport a harvester, for instance, for up here, down here, you're talking 10, 15 minutes just in, in transportation times, in just traveling times, okay? So it's not a small map. I, I can't reiterate that more than enough, but anyway, been there we've done that we know now that that's the way it's going to be so we'll just delve straight in what do you think all right let's go so there are three main storage areas um, 
one is a basically is a permanent storage area and the other is a, a temporary. So this is one of the temporary storage areas over here. Um, so you can you can offload your grains, all that sort of stuff in here, and you can store them there temporarily. I can't remember what the, what the and the piles down the back, which we'll go through to show later, um, are just visual indication of where you store your your seeds and stuff like that as well. Okay. There are wave bridges on the entrances, which adds a nice little effect. And uh, and yes, that's that's the main part there. Now the main storage area is as was on the PDA, is down in the middle of the map. Wait for it to come up. That's a the other one. All right, down in here. That's that's the main storage area. The other storage areas you have one over here and you have one down here. Okay, near the animals. So down here, this is where the animals are. I'll turn these on. I won't wait that one on. There we go. So down here you have a storage area. You have your silage and BGA, cows, sheep, and pigs down through here. Storage area, like I see through there, storage area over here, and storage there. And then all around here is where we have our industry, and your forestry is over here in between the fields 22 to 20 and field 3. All right. So let's have a look see. So, firstly, what we'll do is we'll just uh, acquaint ourselves with the vehicles we're going to be using. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. So I'll just head in. I'll just bring myself down to the level. Well, too low. Sorry. Okay. So let's have a look. So it should be no surprise to anyone that's seen my videos before. My tractor of, uh, of choice is the Class Zerion 5000 series. So as you can see here, I'm using my personalized versions. Now what I will do quickly is just slow that down okay so these are the per my personalized versions so basically I've got various configurations dual wheel dual narrows uh, wide Michelins and wide okay so that's my primary workhorse they're the ones that are going to do most of the work like the plowing and all that sort of stuff I then also have four Fent Tri-6 tractors again in my personalized limited edition variant okay so we have those there are big heavy lifters as well so we've got a choice of tractors in that regard i have some coolamon mother bins overloading bins now i am going to modify the storage capacity of these at the moment these are 200 ton so it's 200,000 liter i'm going to modify those to be like maybe 2 million i know it's not necessarily uh true to gameplay or real realism but um just to make them more usable because basically 200 ton it'll be filled up very quickly on these fields our cedar slash cultivator of choice is the horse pronto 15 meter okay that's a modern one it is slightly quicker than the the normal stock version um, but in my uh, duck soil orange so that's what we're going to use i have got some of the well, one of the john d cedars out uh, i'm not sure if we're going to use those yet but We'll have to see. My one of my fertilizer units. I'm using the converted New Holland SP. What was it? 400F. This is a mod by Stevie, one of my uh, favorite modders, and and definitely one of my favorite map makers. Sorry, Ben, but um, Stevie's maps are, are my all-time favorite. And uh, basically, these fertilizer units use digestate to fertilize the fields. Now, the reason I'm using these specifically is there's no other real use for digestate on this map as it currently stands other than for fertilizing so we're going to make use of the digestate we make from the silage fermenter and all that sort of stuff in using to fertilize our fields so customize those now nice duck soily orange and that's going to be our uh, fertilizer we'll probably also get the similar version with just the standard fertilizer so for liquid fertilizer our combine of choice for this map is going to be a modified New Holland. Again, this is done by Stevie. So he's made up a cat version, caterpillar version. So we've got the caterpillar version all done in black with orange trim on our wheels. And we've got a modified New Holland header. Again, done out in our lovely orange. Okay, and as you can see, we've got six harvesters ready to go. We may need more, we'll see how we go. 
Okay, my second little workhorse tractor are the Class 950 Axions or 900 series Axions. Um, as you can see, I've got them there with a couple of different various sizes of tippers, which are going to be used down in like the animal areas and for, for transfer between points, stuff like that, for the smaller transporting stuff. For my grass work, now, those of you that know I go by the moniker Lord of the Grass, well, there's, of course, the one that I would always have, which is my Duck Zorley Edition Big M, with its extended hitch, and I've also got a, a Vermeer rake on the back. So the rake does both wind rowing and tethering. So it will quickly turn out the grass output from the back of the Big M into hay, ready to go. We also have the two Crohn's. I have the Crone Big L 500 Pro Edition, which is uh, basically a mower and collects all the grass. It's got a 100,000 litre tank capacity, and I've got the Crone 550GD, the ZX 550GD, um, which is a slightly better model than the L500 Pro, but it hasn't quite got the same carrying capacity. It's only got a 70,000 litre capacity, but that will do us fine. Over here, I also have, there we go, there's one of the game saves, so it's just pausing for a second. There we go. Um, we also have another Big M. Now, this is the modified Big M. Uh, it's the larger version. So, basically, um, what you can do with this one is you can extend out, if I can remember which one it was. Let's bring up the key, um, L key. So you can extend out the rear mower, okay? Again, not necessarily realistic, but for this map, if I decide to do some big grass fields, I want something that's gonna tear through that grass as quick as possible. And this is what I'll probably use to do that. Okay. So nice uh, sort of red color there, red texturing, like it. Okay, now heavy haulage. We are using the Duck Zorley K100 Kenworths. Now there's two different models. There's uh, the stock standard model and the limited edition model. Now both of these were made by my good friend Rockhound of Rockhound Modding. And uh, these are exclusive to Duck Zorley Gaming, obviously, um, with our nice moniker on the side. So we're using them as our, our specific trucks where we can. This one here has actually got the AR mod pack on the back of it. So it's got the service pack, so I can use this for um, refueling and reseeding and refertilizing all that sort of stuff in the field if I need to. Um, we also have our Ducks Oily Gaming cargo bull trailer. The cargo bull is made by Maverick 74 and it has a 500,000 litre capacity. So we're using that because, um, well, we're just going to need to. This one here has one of the map specific trailers on it. This is the map specific animal trailer. So there are some trailers you will need to use on this map that come with the map as part of the toll package. And this is one of them for transporting your animals around. Okay. So we're going to use that for when we do our animals, which won't be for some time, but we'll get that. Then we have two toll trucks. We have a Kenworth and a Volvo. So we'll just go in the shop and have a look at these. So recently Ben has put them all under the one banner. So the trucks, there we go. So we have the Kenworth T908 Toll Green. Okay, so it's a 1177 kilowatt or 1600 horsepower, 1200 litre tank, 90 kilometers an hour. Then you have the Volvo 780 Toll, 699 kilowatt, 950 horsepower, 65 kilometers an hour. Okay, both quite good trucks. Um, the T908 is a, is a power horse, but I will warn you, it does take off rather slowly. Okay, it's not, it's not one that you're going to be racing around. Yes, Farmer Klein, I'm looking at you. Okay, trailers. So again, specific trailers for the map. So we have the Toll MBJ front and back trailer. So we're talking road train trailers here, folks. So you have your A trailer and your B trailer. The A trailer being the front trailer with the fifth wheel at the back. So you can then fit more corresponding A trailers. Or right at the end, you'll put a B trailer. Okay, and that's how you form up your road train. Now in saying that, I'm also using the custom road train pack from GTX Modding, uh, which again is another one of my favorite maps. Um, but uh, to do some of the specific stuff here, we're using the toll trailers as we need to. 
the toll food semi-trailer. So this is used for transporting a lot of the products, okay, and the produce around the map. And you can only use this trailer. So we've got one of those ready to go as well. And the other one, again, is another A and B trailer configuration. It's the dope car or dope car. I don't know. Anyway, um, A and B trailers. So again, A trailer with a fifth wheel at the back and then your B trailer for the rear. Okay. Now, they have a capacity of 200,000 litre for the for the um, A trailer and 100,000 litres for the B trailer. I would tend to suggest, Ben, that either they get swapped around or um, made the same because that doesn't make sense that the smaller one is bigger than the has more capacity than the big one, but anyway. Um, the food semi trailer has a 50,000 litre capacity, and we go over to the MBJ trailers again, 200,000 litres for the A trailer and 250,000 for the B trailer, which I think is a much better configuration of the loadout than what the Dopka ones are. Okay, all right, what else have we got? I think that's pretty much it. So that's our primary equipment we're going to be using. All right, so let's go have a bit of a look see around town then, shall we? Okay. So this is the hay sale area. Okay. So all through here is just storage facilities. So you can store, well, I guess you can store trucks and tractors in here if you really wanted to. But this is for storing of all your bay, your, your hay, bleh, 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 start again. This is for the storage of all your grass and hay bales. Um, you can store them long term, short term, whatever you want to do, um, waiting for a better price, whatever else. But that's where you can store them. There's plenty of storage to leave. Okay. Okay. In between the two way bridges, okay, way bridge one, way bridge two, in this area here, this is your sale point for all types of hay and straw. Okay. So that's your hay, your, your sales area for your hay. All right. Nice and simple. I love the amount of um, storage room here. Fantastic. All right, so now we'll head down here and we'll see what we've got down, down next. Okay, so next we have our livestock market. This is it in here, our landmark livestock market. Um, so you can purchase your, your cattle and your sheep and your pigs in here. As per sort of most of the other maps, you can you can purchase them and send them straight to your to your storage area, to your to your field or, or whatever for the for the map, um, and as long as you pay the transportation charge, or you can bring your trailer in here and you can load up in here and then transport them down to the farm. Okay, so it gives you that option to do that. All right, so now we'll move on to the next little section down here. Okay, next down the uh, down the road is our dairy. So our dairy again has a wave bridge on the way in and out. Um, so input from milk from the uh, from the carrier and transport to the dairy. The output will be cheese and milk. So uh, see around here. So it will um, it will output uh, cheese and milk here. Um, reverse into the siding door to. Uh, to obtain your uh, crops for your truck. Um, if you don't want to have your milk sold, you will need to get the, um, the stop milk mod um, to stop it being sold automatically, so it will be sold automatically. Okay. All right. So next we'll head over to CSR. Here we are, we're at CSR. So this is our sugar factory. So the sugar factory, when we get around the back, I'm pretty sure that's where all the points are for here. The sugar factory will take um, sugar beet, empty pallets, and water. And it'll output the sugar on the pallets. And these pallets can be picked up by using our toll trailer. Okay. So I'm not entirely sure where the offload points will be. Um, I'm assuming we're just going to dump it over there. But um, we'll work that out. We'll, um, we'll get in here and we'll get this going. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to finding out how all this sort of stuff works and where we've got to dump everything. Obviously, there's a dump area there, so that's where we're dumping probably our sugar beets, I would imagine. 
but um, again, we'll uh, we'll investigate and work it out. All right. So next, we'll head back up to the uh, the high end of town and see what else is up. Okay. So here we are. We're at high end timber. So high end timber is the second part of our wood production. The first part is over at the forestry section, and over here, this is where we make pallets. So we're producing our pallets for the sugar factory and all that sort of stuff. So we get boards from the forestry section, we bring them over here, and then it will output pallets, and then uh, we can also get wood chips as well, okay? So we'll be doing a fair bit of work over here as well to provide pallets for all our produce that we need to, okay? So anyway, we'll keep moving along. So just in here, this is our wool sale area. So this is where we'll come and select our, and sell our wool. Now there's three uh, separate agents effectively in here that we can sell our wool to. Um, and they're in here. So we have Aussie Wool Exports, we have Elders and we have Landmark. All right, so depending upon the price, depends on who you're going to come in and sell that. Now also over the back here, we have our loading point for our trains. One of our loading points. Um, so yeah, that's for our wool and all that, I would imagine. But again, we'll, uh, we'll let's go that further as we go along. I'm just, it's, I'm just reading. It's an offload area at the train for the train. So not so much a loading point. Okay, so over in here. As we get into the central part of town, uh, the idea is is they don't like having road trains running through the middle of town, especially the road trains I build. So this area here has been uh, set aside so as you can couple and decouple or uncouple your uh, your road trains and take your loads into the appropriate areas through the town area. Okay. Now over here we have our Shell petrol station. So we have a fuel station here. Okay, so here we are at the Toll Logistics Centre. Uh, the Toll Logistics Centre is the is the heart of the map, uh, the heart of the distribution, everything else for the for the whole game. So, at the front we have the inputs. At the rear of the building we have the outputs. So, at the front we can bring a trailer in and we can dump off any of the following inputs: beer, wine, wine small, grape juice, wheat flour, barley flour, corn flour. Milk, tomato, lettuce, red cabbage, cauliflower, raspberries, strawberries, sausage, meat, cheese, wool, empty pallets, and sugar. Okay? So we just bring our trailer over there and we can unload it. No problems. Nice and easy. Over at the rear, we'll head down to the rear of the building now. Again, just these buildings and the, and the areas the buildings are in are large. They're as, they're as big as some full fields and that in, in other maps. So this is the rear of the building. So over here, so the outputs, um, we, can, we can offload everything here. The inputs and outputs of stock into the logistics center are recorded in the PDA. Um, so that's that's nice and simple for you to keep track of. Um, it also says that uh, an amount box will also display when loading a trailer so you can choose what you want loaded and the amount left in storage. Okay, so all, all the basic stuff you need to have there. So it's basically another central distribution area for all your produce. So where you've normally got your silos for your grains and stuff like that, this is basically going to be the same for your produced goods. Okay, so we'll move on to our next area. Okay, come on, let's face it. Most of you here just you can produce beer. And this is where we're at now, the Cooper's Brewery. I think Ben could have chosen a better brand of beer, but... Uh, Anyway, we'll deal with it. So the Cooper's Brewery. So we go through in here into the production facility. So basically, for the brewery, we have inputs of water and barley, and then the toll um, transport trailer can come here and collect our beer. All right. So we'll head on over here. And we'll see where our inputs and that go. Your barley goes in here somewhere. 
in there. So that's where you drop your barley off. Okay, nice and simple. And then you drop your water off here. It's in a bit of a weird place to put water, but anyway. Alright, so that should be fairly simple. So your beer production should be a very quick one to get up and running, as long as you've got barley being produced as one of your primary fields to start with. Okay? Or if you've got a stock of barley um, ready to go. So that's your beer. So we'll um, head on over to the next area. Okay, the next section we have is our fuel production. So from here we put our rape input into the bin over here to my right. And then we will output forage, so digestate, from over there near the tanks. At the end of that building, the green building over there, we will have digestate output. And then over here near these fuel tanks, we'll have our fuel output. So it shouldn't take too much to get our own fuel manufactured, plus obviously having our silage and our digestate. So we'll get onto that very quickly as we get into our Let's Play. So we'll move quickly onto our next spot. Okay, so here we are at Tip Top. Okay, so the bakery takes wheat, barley and corn, and that's what kickstarts the process off. Once we've done that, we'll start producing some pallets. And the pallets will produce, or well, on the pallets will be our three products being corn flour, barley flour, and wheat flour. And from those, we then add those in together, and then we create our bread. Okay? So, our wheat, barley, and corn get dropped off here. And then out through here on the other side, this is where we'll output our corn flour, barley flour, and wheat flour. And then we take the three of those and bring them over here, sorry, over to here, drop them off there. And then over on that back set of pallets outputs there, that's where we'll get our bread, okay? And that's the end process. So three products in to start with, three products out as an intermediate stage, and then one product out at the end being our tip-top bread. So good on you, Mum. All right, we're on to our next one. Okay, our next section is the greenhouses. So in here, the greenhouses, we have 36 of them down through here. The greenhouses need water and compost. So you'll be going through here and busily loading these up with compost and water. So again, that in itself is just a, um, a task in itself. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a water output anywhere here nearby. They are all over the place. You'll see them sticking up out of the ground, little red things. But anyway, so we'll find one of those later. The compost, we'll reduce the compost here. The fuel goes in through here, at the bottom here where these yellow pipes are. You must use the um, the toll fuel tanker to, um, to do that. Um, you'll load your compost, sorry, your um, hay or grass or whatever in the, in the composter there. It will then output through here some, um, some compost. From there, we will then get some pallets. We'll bring some pallets in here, load up the areas here with pallets, um, which we'll do later on. And then in these last couple of sheds over here, that's where the produced prod or the produce will be placed on the pallets and output for you to take to it, the toll distribution centre, or it'll be sold. All right, so we'll move on to the next area. Okay. So that's pretty much a fairly good coverage, I think, so far of uh, our Broadacres farm. So in today's episode, we've covered our hay stall, our CSR sugar production area, our factory, our refinery, our greenhouses, our beer production, our logistics store, store warehouse, uh, our wool sales and distribution area, our petrol station, well, one of the petrol stations, um, our second part to our wood production, and our bakery and uh, that's basically a, a good chunk of the production area so we're going to call it quits there because we're going to be well over 30 minutes by the time we finish editing and, and getting all this one done uh, in the next episode we'll cover our forestry section um, and where we do a lot of our initial woodworking stuff we will cover the animals in in some depth in and in all the other areas that are to do with our animal production and, and facilities We'll cover the biogas, the abattoir, 
Um, we'll go through the cell areas, the sale point areas a bit more, and we'll look at the three main storage areas in a bit of detail. So still gives us plenty of stuff to look at. Um, but as, as you can sort of tell, there is, there is a lot of, of stuff to do on this map and there's a lot of driving around. Um, I've probably edited out uh, a, a good chunk of probably 15 minutes of just general driving uh, from the map currently to get to this point in time. So that's it from me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this first look episode at uh, Broad Acres. Um, I'm going to love playing this, even though it, sometimes it may be very long in the tooth because we're going to spend a lot of time on those big fields. Um, I think it should be good fun. So if you did enjoy the episode, then please uh, press that like button. Uh, it's purely to give me an indication at the moment that, uh, that I'm on the right track and people are enjoying what I'm putting out. Um, and also, uh, if, you, if you're not already a subscriber, press that subscribe button. If you are already a subscriber, I thank you again for your, uh, your loyalty and your subscription. And, uh, and again, I hope to continue this on and now we'll start getting a bit more diversity, hopefully on the channel, so we'll get a couple of different Let's Plays running. Um, seeing it's been some time waiting for a nice new map to, to do something different on and, and this seems to be it. So, that's it from me. I'm Ducks Ollie at Ducks Ollie Gaming. I really do uh, thank Ben and all his group for putting out this map. Not only the fact that it's a good, uh, good Aussie map, um, but just it, it does seem to be very, very good, very detailed with lots of different stuff to do. So uh, congratulations, Ben, and, and all your, uh, your helpers. You've done a, a fantastic job. So until next time, this is Duck Zolli wishing you all a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Hooroo!